Morning everyone, uh, welcome to today's lesson all about our key female characters in The Merchant of Venice, so Portia and Jessica. Uh, they're very different characters, as you know, and we're going to start off to begin with just by recapping on religion during the 17th century. So in your window there and on your PowerPoint, there you go, you'll see a link to a short article about 17th century religion. Um, I'd like to read through that. And then come up with your own ideas about what you think people in the 17th century might have thought about people who changed their religion. As usual, read the article or complete the task, but pause the video whilst you're doing it and then you can come back and see how well you did. Okay. So as you will have seen, there was a lot of conflict in the 17th century England uh, around religion, both in terms of uh, Roman Catholicism and what you might classify as, as Protestantism or Anglicism. Um, and it meant that there were even limitations about where people could go and there were limitations on who could worship, who could actually lead those worships. Um, so a real conflict around the time, even within what you might call holistically Christianity. Um, so the idea of people changing religions would have been quite shocking. Um, it would have happened certainly under duress. So, for instance, when people were Roman Catholic uh, and they were being persecuted, they may have been forced into changing their religion um, or to, to convert. And you would have been very unlikely to encounter anybody who wasn't, um, who didn't form part of that overall Christian faith. So you would never have really met any Sikhs or Muslims or Jewish people, in fact. So the idea that um, you might change your religion from uh, a, a, a traditionally Christian belief into something that was non-Christian was unheard of. So extremely limited and uh, people would be very uh, very unlikely to support anyone who changed religion. Now our next task is there is a worksheet attached to this lesson um, that focuses on Act 2 Scene 6 which is where Jessica absconds from her home with Graziano. So what I want to do is work through that worksheet, it's only a side or two, with a few key, which have a few key questions, uh, and it's quite a shortened version of the scene. So we're not expecting you to reread the whole scene yourselves. I've selected a quick uh, and easy quote here from Jessica that is probably um, one of the most telling of what she says. So she says to Graciano, here, catch this casket. It is worth the pains. I am glad tis night you do not look on me, for I am much ashamed of my exchange. But love is blind, and lovers cannot see the pretty follies that themselves commit. For if they could, Cupid himself would blush to see me thus transformed to a boy. So we remember that she dressed as a page boy or a, a, a torch carrier as part of Bassanio's party up to Belmont. Um, but at this moment, she has thrown out of the window the casket of, of ducats and jewellery that she has stolen from her father. So complete the worksheet. Pause the video while you do it and we'll come back here and we'll move on to the next task together. Right, so moving on. We're gonna ask you to write an essay now, comparing those two characters. Now, to do that, there are some key steps. So firstly, you'll be, you've read what you've already done on the worksheet uh, around Jessica and Act 2, Scene 6. However, uh, you'll then be looking at the scene we've recently done, which was Act 4, Scene 1, where Portia, um, acting and, and behaving as the judge, um, helps Antonio survive the ordeal and the trial with Shylock. So look at those two scenes only. We're looking at the similarities between the two women and then differences between the two women and crucially how they interact with Shylock. So I'd say that those three paragraphs, three paragraphs are going to focus on the similarities, the differences and their interactions with Shylock. Pause the video again, have a go at that. Probably spend 15, 20 minutes on this particular task. Um, and when you come back, I'm going to give you some other suggestions about what you could have included. Oh, oh you're back. OK, good. Right. So there's a couple of key things here. Um, obviously, the, the clear summary, they are two of only three female characters uh, in the play. So quite li quite limited in terms of um, the scope for female actors, you might say. But also, it's a quite that's quite a basic summary. It's quite obvious. You probably don't need to mention that. Um, the assumption is there already. Um, the kind of similarities we look at is that um, Portia is, is uh, clearly in Venice at the time a Christian. However, there is very limited exposure from in her text of or her dialogue of her talking about religion in the same way that 
we make those connections more so with Shylock and his Jewishness uh, and Jessica, who even in us in that Act 2, Scene 6, admits that she would rather be a Christian. Uh, in contrast to Shylock, who of course is forced into conversion against his wishes. Uh, and obviously that's the kind of final scene we see of him, is him leaving in, in physical pain at the idea of both losing money and having to change his religion. So he loses, it's a very much a lose-lose situation for Shylock. Um, so for Jessica though, it's, it's quite interesting because she's seen as being um, more Christian than Shylock, despite her being Jewish. Um, and some of the things that she says um, tell the fact that she, is, she would rather be Christian. So she says in Act 2, Scene 6, now by my hood a Gentile and no Jew. So the idea that she wishes that she were like a Gentile, a, a non-Jew, than to be uh, Jewish. Later on in that same scene, um, she says, for she is wise, if I can judge of her, and fair she is. Uh, sorry, this is of Lorenzo saying, of Jessica. Fair she is wise, and I, if I can judge her, and fair she is, if that mine eyes be true, and true she is, as she hath proved herself, and therefore, like herself, wise, fair, and true. So Lorenzo is very complimentary to calling her fair, true, wise, okay? And those are the things we might already associate with Portia, already now being applied to Jessica. So in Lorenzo's words, she's uh, a girl who deserves some high praise. Um, she then, Jessica then, uh, in a sort of earlier scene, um, shows a suggestion that she's quite ambitious, um, in a sense that perhaps Portia isn't because she has less need to be. Portia's already quite wealthy um, and her goal is simply, it would appear, to find a husband through her father's machinations. Whereas Jessica um, has to, perhaps, because she feels trapped by her father being a Jew and, and therefore his place in society limits what she can accomplish, um, she says to Lorenzo, Oh Lorenzo, if thou keep promise, I shall end this strife, become a Christian and thy loving wife. So again, a lovely little uh, couplet there that suggests a plan, as you can probably tell from the words, let alone the rhyme. Um, and that marriage to Lorenzo will potentially mean that she can now be classified as uh, a woman rather a Christian woman rather than a Jewish woman and therefore have different uh, standing in society and those rights that she would have would be very different. Um, so the similarities we might see between her and Portia um, are around love. So there is this desire to be loved, to be married, uh, to find a husband. Uh, that is a very clear similarity. Um, how they deal with Shylock in our, in our final paragraph, if you like, draws more comparisons of similarities than differences. So they are both um, quite ruthless and merciless in the way they treat Shylock. Um, we hear from Tubal that J uh, Jessica was in Genoa and she spent all the money on a, buying a monkey. She spent it on a one night out. She spent an amount, such an amount of money that, that Shylock is um, clearly horrified. Um, and that really relates to the fact that she, he sees her as you know, irresponsible, juvenile, spending money that he's worked hard to, to get. Um, and that sort of paints more of a picture of him as being quite focused on money rather than, than paternal love. With Portia, she had the chance to let Shylock go, or let him accept the money from Bassanio and to leave and to have his pride, his, his faith, um, and perhaps not quite revenge, but at least it would have been a very good way of scaring Antonio to perhaps changing his behaviour around Jewish people. Now what's happened is now that Antonio has got away with it, he could potentially become no different towards how he was before, be no different towards how he was before. So still spitting at Jewish traders and, and calling them dogs and being quite um, offensive. Whereas Shylock now feels like he's won nothing. So and that's down to Portia intervening. If she had not intervened, Yes, it would have meant Antonio may have died, but her intervention perhaps went too far. So she has gone to an extent to an extent that if you looked at Portia, how she treats the Prince of Morocco right at the very beginning, her kind of prejudicial uh, description of all the suitors she has, and in the end how she essentially makes life much worse for Shylock um, to save her uh, her her husband's friend, she's a horrible, horrible person. There is very little nice things you can say about Portia. Oh, she, yeah, she's intelligent, but no more so than any regular person, perhaps. 
Yes, she's found a loophole which traps Shylock, but that's not intelligence if it's spiteful, is it? So perhaps we should look at Jessica and feel that she is not a particularly good person because she has uh, broken that love between her and her father. She has gone against his wishes, which you might say are quite uh, might be quite biased because he is a looking out for her and protecting her as a father, but also completely shaped by the fact that he is being um, demonised um, by their Christian community. So he, this idea of villain and victim is very clear with Shylock, whereas with Jessica and Portia, they are less so victims and mostly villains. So it perhaps says quite a lot about Shakespeare that there's such villainy uh, in the female characters. We see that again, we've looked at uh, Lady Macbeth in the past, we've touched on that, um, but this might be either it could be suggestive like we looked at with Steinbeck and Weiss and Men quite suggestive that oh well, this is a commentary it's not a a criticism perhaps or or it's Shakespeare showing us how women are over perceived rather than him saying oh women are like this we don't know that's up to you to interpret but nonetheless a very complex and very interesting uh, perspective I think so the last thing I want you to do is just to, to round off uh, today's lesson is find three words from that act two, scene six that you think are very important, like the most important that help you understand exactly what um, the differences are between Jessica and Portia. So what words and phrases, sorry, words specifically that Jessica says that show her to be different to Portia, okay? Now, once you've picked those three, then you need to support your two opinions of, of Jessica, but you can only be one sentence for each, excuse me, so you need to write one sentence for each opinion. So condensing what you've already put in your essay answer into two things. And lastly, you need to present one alternative. One, perhaps now you've heard my perspective and you've considered your own, what would be the best alternative opinion of Jessica? So in a contrast to your opinions. Okay, that's to round off today's lesson. That's essentially it. Thank you for watching. Uh, remember, like and subscribe and all that nonsense. I'm not a YouTuber, I'm a teacher. Um, and hopefully you're getting to learn something a little bit more about the female characters and obviously the impact that religion has had. So religion and gender as themes within the Merchant of Venice. All right. Thank you and see you tomorrow.